Hey everyone, Professor Justin here, and this video is going to be a quick and dirty introduction to doing 4A analysis on a spreadsheet program. So what happened last night is that we were in the advanced lab, we were taking some data on some how accelerometers change over time, and we saw some frequency components, we wanted to determine what they were, and it wasn't easy to get like Google Sheets to immediately pull out a 4A transform, even though a 4A transform is pretty straightforward to implement routine, and so I thought, oh, well, let's just try to figure out how to, the quickest way to, to take a Fourier transform to get the frequency content information. Now, it turns out Google Sheets doesn't really do it, but you can do it on Excel. You can do it on what I'm going to do is Libre Open Office. And so um, I'll show you how to do that. I'm not really going to go into the details about how Fourier transforms work. We're going to need some of that information in order to do one, um, but I'll try to link to some videos that give you the details of how the routine actually does the work of getting the frequency content from a signal. I'm just going to show you how to like throw it on a spreadsheet. So here's some data, um, which we gathered in the lab last night. My students did. Here's the acceleration column and the time column. You see what we have is like at each 0.02 seconds, we measured the acceleration. And if you plot this thing, you can see that there is definitely some frequency components in there. Now, taking a Fourier transform of this using a spreadsheet is incredibly easy. So let me show you how to do that first, and then I'll show you how to make it useful. So this is going to be Fourier transform. Fourier transform, the way I'm going to set it up is I'm going to have um, the result is going to be the uh, magnitude of the Fourier transform and then the phase of the Fourier transform. And so if you go up to insert and function, and then click four to find the Fourier transform function, do next, you have a whole set of information you've got to enter. The array is the most important thing. The array is going to be the Y value. So this is a time domain thing. We've measured at a specific time, we measure the acceleration. So in this array, you want to actually put in the measurement you made. So I'm going to put in the acceleration. Notice I have like a whole ton of data here. So let's just grab it all. Okay, so that's all of my sort of Y component, my dependent data. Uh, so grouped by columns is just a flag to indicate whether the group the array is grouped by columns or not. Uh, it is not. It is so it is grouped by columns. So I'm going to put one. You can skip the inverse. We are actually going to put one in the polar column. That's going to tell us the magnitude and the phase instead of telling us the real and imaginary parts of the Fourier transform. If that doesn't make sense to you, skip it. But uh, it's easier to put if you're interested in what I'm interested in, which is the size of the of the frequency components, put in one in the in the polar column is there. Uh, you know, depending whether you're using Excel or Open Office, it may be sort of tricky to know which of these things are required and which aren't. If you don't enter that, you get an error, which is stupid. Um, so you have to put a one to tell them that it is true by columns. Anyway, now click OK. You get a whole bunch of data. You can see that for every point in your original data set, you get a Fourier transform component. Uh, at, I've named the columns as what the result is, magnitude and phase. But the problem here is that each of these magnitudes is a size of a particular frequency component, which isn't actually told to us by the Fourier transform. So that's what's sort of tricky here. So in order to figure out which components these are, which we have to figure out another column and put frequency here is going to be in Hertz. So what I need to do to get the frequency of the Fourier transform is I have to know how quickly I sampled the data. So the, the uh, sampling rate, sampling rate is going to be one over the smallest time increment. So you have to be a little bit careful. I think that the sampling rate has to be constant. I don't think you can sample at any random times. That's a different kind of Fourier transform. And so I think this one needs to be a constant sampling rate. So it's one over the interval of time between all your data. You also need to know how many data points you took. So any points. And usually what I do here is I just do a count A and just highlight the entire column. And that will just count the number of uh, entries in the column. 751, the sampling rate is 50. So uh, what we want to put up here now is the how much the, um, the frequency has been divided up into components so we know what that column is. First one is zero. That's a constant offset. So when you do a Fourier transform, there's a constant offset that has no frequency components. You can see in this case, that is actually the largest value. That's relatively common. And so we want to um, step the frequency step by the appropriate thing. And the appropriate thing happens to be uh, the sampling rate divided by the number of points. Whoops. Sampling rate divided by the number of points. So we'll go back and make sure that these are fixed. So when I cut and paste, they get copied all the way down because the constant the sampling rate is going to be constant. Uh, so I see five. And then cut and paste that all the way down. Okay, and you can see the frequency here went from zero to about 50 hertz. 
And notice that the Fourier transform only can give you information up to the limit of the sampling rate. So if you take the entire data range, you get a um, you sampling the frequency from zero or the smallest value up to the sampling rate, which is 50. Of course, if you're looking for an oscillatory signal, you can't like sample longer than the oscillation frequency because you won't see the oscillation frequency. And actually, the largest time you can imagine if you've taken data at one at um, 50 hertz is to sample up to 50 hertz. Now, I'm going to plot this and you're going to see that actually the situation is not that good. You can't actually sample 50 hertz because if you have a single sine wave and you take one sample, you can't tell that it's a sine wave, right? Actually, all you can do is half of the frequency. So our sampling rate of, of one of 50 hertz only gets us to a, to a frequency sensitivity of 25 hertz. And so you're going to see that when I do this plot. So I'm going to plot frequency versus magnitude because that's what my Fourier transform, that's the information I want my Fourier transform to tell me. So go down. I'm going to plot this whole entire thing. Um, when you're doing Fourier transforms, I think it's kind of nice to do the dot, no dots with lines, but of course it's up to you and I just want to get this done. So there it is. Okay, so you can see here that we are being told what the magnitude of each frequency component is, but you can actually see there is some symmetry to this plot. That's this uh, half frequency problem that I'm talking about, which is called the, uh, hold on, I'll look it up because I always forget what it's called. Yes, the Nyquist frequency, right? That's Nyquist frequency is one half of the sampling rate. That tells you what the um, the largest uh, frequency spec uh, band you can measure, and it's half of the sampling rate. So the sampling rate is 50 hertz. That means we can only get to 25 hertz for our sensitivity. And you can see that's about what's being shown here. You can see this uh, this line here, which is showing us a strong amplitude of 12 hertz or something, is being duplicated over here. Now, of course, we're counting the hertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the range of this plot. So change the data range. Uh, I want it to go to wherever 25 is. It's about half this. Let's try like um, uh, 325 is about about half of this. I might not get all of it. Yeah, I didn't quite get all of it. But now this tells you the essence of the correct Fourier transform, which although it shows a signal at a constant offset, that's a zero frequency component. Um, it shows some at 10 hertz and then maybe at like 12 hertz or something. And then you can go down and actually check in your column where that is. So you can see the yeah, the amplitude here is a, about nine. That was the first peak. And the other peak is down here. Uh, 12 hertz is there. We got 12 hertz again right there, probably 13 hertz or so. So that tells you where the peaks are in your frequency. So the frequency content of your signal in this particular case is focused at you know something like 13 hertz and also at about 10 hertz. So I did this a little bit by guessing and checking and using some information from the web. I'll post those links where I figured out how to do this from so you can check me. But also we should verify that this sort of works. So what I want to do next is I want to show you doing a Fourier transform of a single sine uh, wave to show that this actually re reproduces what you expect it to. And then and I'll do a multi-component sine wave as well. So the next part of the video is just demonstrating that what I'm saying here is actually the correct thing. Okay, so here I'm going to do a single cosine test and a multiple frequency test. So what I'm doing is I am setting up um, a function which is just going to be a cosine curve. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm setting the frequency to be 100 hertz, and I'm playing around with the time interval. So if the frequency is 100 hertz, I need to sample fast enough. So over here, I've calculated the sampling rate, which is one over my time interval sampling rate is a thousand so I should be able to be sensitive to a frequency of 100 I could change this to something a little bit bigger something like that my frequency sampling frequency is now 200 so I should be sensitive to half that which is only 100 so that's actually not good enough so that's why I picked that is because I'm sensitive now up to 500 free, uh, hertz and now that will actually tell me make me sensitive to the 100 uh, frequency I need to uh, to create this data. I need to have an amplitude and a phase. Those are randomly chosen. I should be able to pick anything I want there, and the numbers may change, but the uh, result shouldn't, um, including the phase. Right. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm artificially creating the time, just the time, uh, you know, previous time plus the time interval, and the position is governed by a cosine function. So amplitude times the cosine of two pi times the frequency. That's because the frequency here is in hertz, not in uh, radians per second. If it was in radians per second, I wouldn't need that. So this is that that two pi factor there. So you can check that on your own by saying that okay, the cosine, um, a full period of cosine is when the um, you know, when the argument is two pi, right? Zero, two pi, four pi, et cetera. Um, when A2 hits the frequency, so that means that after, uh, sorry, this is one over 100 because one cycle happens at one over 100, right? Um, 
and this becomes 100, this is 1, it's not 2 pi. So you need to multiply that times 2 pi to make sure that the argument of the cosine is 2 pi when the frequency goes through one cycle. And then the phase is just there. And notice I put the dollar signs there to make sure that I'm picking just the fixed um, the fixed values here instead of um, the instead of changing values as I cut and paste this, whereas the time interval right there um, is the changing value from the time. So anyway, so I just entered that and then I cut and pasted that thing all the way down so that now I have like this oscillating signal. Um, I could plot that it would look like a cosine curve fine, but you can see that it varies uh, it goes between negative numbers, positive numbers as a cosine curve. What? So I did my Fourier transform over here. You can see my command is somewhere right there. So same thing, I did the no column sorting and then I asked for the magnitude and the phase. And then I put, and I just did that and you can see it's one for one relative to the data. And then I have the, I put the frequency here, set at zero and then added um, the, so I did it a little bit differently, but this is the sampling rate divided by N, which is the number of um, number of samples I have over here. And so we can now check just by I and say, okay, where's the magnitude the largest? You can see the magnitude is the largest around here. And that's where the hundred Hertz frequency is. So you can see that it's basically working. Now, of course the frequency, uh, you know, the way that the frequency was divided up was not equal to the exact frequency. So this is not exactly 100, but that's just because of the number of points and stuff. So I could like try to play with that a little bit, right? Change it to 102. And you can see the magnitude at, at 102 is even larger now. So clearly what this thing is picking up is the fact that there is a frequency component at 102, which is a lot larger than everything else around it. Cool. So that seemed to work. But of course, that's, and of course, you can see we have the same reflection here at 500. We have zero phase. That's the maximum of the Nyquist frequency. That's where you can't get frequencies which are any larger than that. And then the double thing happens over here. Cool. Um, so this is fine. But of course, this is a simple cosine curve. So it's not really a demonstration that we really, really know what we're doing because really what you want to use Fourier transform for is to determine frequency components that are complicated, that have a lot of different frequency components in it, not something which clearly has only one like this guy does. So here's a multiple frequency version. So in this version, I have a bunch of different frequencies. This is frequency one. I have frequency two, 10 hertz, 40 hertz. And then frequency three is 30 hertz. Over here, delta F, that's the sampling frequency. So I could, based on my time interval here, which is actually 0.01, so it's a longer time interval, uh, my sampling rate is now 100 hertz, which means I'm only sensitive up to 50 hertz. So all my frequencies now are below 50, 10, 40, and 30. So uh, I constructed the time column the same exact way. The new position is a sum of three different frequency components. So this is now the cosine function of two pi times the frequency times the time plus the phase. This is now a second version of that entire thing, which is just using the uh, frequency amplitude phase two. This is the third version using just the frequency amplitude phase three. So I have three different cosine curves, which are superimposed on top of each other. You can see the amplitudes and the phases are all different. Amplitude one, amplitude half, amplitude point one. I should be able to change those without too much change to the results. Of course, the actual plot would look a lot different, and the amount of frequency content is actually different as well. Uh, but in essence, nothing uh, changes in the data. So, oh, that's interesting. It actually did change when I did that last change. So uh, I can actually make some of the frequency components be so large that they get skipped by the data, maybe. So that's interesting. Let's first look at this and then, and then think about what's happening there. So here's my Fourier transform. I did the standard uh, standard command, which I've done before there, and then I put in the standard frequency, which is the same thing I did before, zero, and then the uh, delta F divided by the total number of counts, which is just the total number of data um, over there. And here's, and then I just plot it, and there you go, right? So here's at 10 hertz at just below 30 and just around 40. So that's what, that are the correct numbers here, 10, 30, and 40. Now let's just so this is showing that indeed we do get the right peaks in the frequency content data based on the information which I created, right? This is fake data. I mean, it's interesting to see that like with fake data, you get clean peaks, but not totally clean. Like this is not a totally clean peak. We've got some extra information here. Interesting, but I don't think that's totally all that relevant um, because it's fake data, right? Uh, so what's interesting is when I changed that amplitude, that did something sort of unexpected. So this is changing the frequency, the amplitude of the, the 30 hertz. Let's change that to five. So that's increasing the amplitude quite, quite a bit. You can see that, yeah, so the amplitude of the various frequency content changes because, of course, there's more of it in it. If I plotted this uh, sine curve, you'd see a dominant frequency of about 30 hertz. 
Um, so that's the one that gets bigger. Now you can see the 41 is now much diminished and the 10 one is down here. So there's obviously some limitations here. This one, we might not have even picked it out as a real signal if we were really doing this. Uh, of course, that's because the amplitude is one tenth as big as the 30 hertz signal. Actually, let me just plot the sine curve to give you a sense of what that thing looks like. Sorry, it's not a sine curve, it's a combination of three different cosine curves. Uh, and again, let's do this scatter with the lines because we really just want to see it looking like a nice cosine curve. Yeah, there it is, right? So when you look at this, now I can't really tell yeah, because the sampling is so bad. Uh, yeah, that's really interesting. But actually looking at this, I'm not even sure by eye I can pick out any frequencies, but actually the Fourier transform could correctly pick out all of them. So so obviously the dominant frequency here, here is the 30 hertz. Let's so if let's change that and see what happens. So decrease the 30 hertz frequency. And <laughs> now look at that, it's even wilder. So you can not clearly see like here's a repeating pattern. There's another repeating pattern like here to there maybe. And then the third one, I can't even really tell, right? So let's just, so um, yeah, I mean, let's just like mess around a little bit to create some very fast behavior. So this is some faster behavior superimposed. Anyway, you can play around with this all day, but this is how Fourier transform works on a spreadsheet. You really just have to throw in the right Fourier command. Remember I did that with insert Fourier insert uh, something function for you and then it just spat all this data and really the trick is getting the frequency content correct and you can see based on just my demonstration here that the frequency content is being uh, 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 you know expressed correctly because the peak here for instance this one now is 5 10 and 40 5 10 and 40 I can play around with that and like set that to 12 so now I got two peaks like almost right on top of each other they can't even be separated anyway you can do this all day so that's it quick and dirty video about how to do Fourier analysis on a spreadsheet this works on at least LibreOffice which is what I'm using at Excel does not work on Google Sheets I can't guarantee it will work on any other spreadsheet program but it will do essentially the same thing you just have to make sure you get the frequency in there correctly okay that's it thanks very much for watching um everyone had to have a good day and I'll see you later